Good morning, dear hearts. We are starting new lessons today. Uh, I, lesson is 181. Please subscribe. But this particular section has an introduction to the lessons. These are lessons, our new lessons are 181 to 200. And here we are just completing the first six months of this calendar year. So the introduction to the lessons that we are about to have is telling us that we could use one word and that one word would be focus. We haven't really been focused and that's kind of what um, the introduction is saying, but it's also saying we're still not asked for total dedication all the time as yet, but we are asked to practice now in order to obtain a sense of peace, such a united and unified commitment would bestow, would give to us. And if, if only periodically, if only intermittently, perhaps once or twice a day that we really had this focus, this real dedication to these lessons and to the goal that we are trying to achieve. It says, you know, we want to remove those blocks that we have had that have been keeping us from having vision. And because our focus to now has been very narrow, we want to widen our focus that we are including all of our brothers truthfully and everything that is of God. And everything that is of God is everything that lives. Okay, so it says um, in the introduction, we are attempting now to lift these blocks however briefly. Words alone cannot convey the sense of liberation which their lifting brings. And remember, Words are tools, and we just spoke of it in the uh, past uh, few lessons, that they're tools, they're limited tools, they don't really give us everything, and we keep being reminded that the time, the time for the use of words will be coming to an end, that we will no longer need them, because remember, all of our minds are joined, but the experience of freedom and of peace that comes as you give up your tight control, who has that, hmm, of what you see speaks for itself. Your motivation will be so intensified that words become of little consequence and you will be sure of what you want and what is valueless. And that is what we really need. We need to come out of this doubting of what we truly want and what is truly valuable for us. Remember, I will not value what is valueless. Uh, and, says, and so we start our journey beyond words by concentrating first on what impedes our progress still. Experience, experience of what exists beyond defensiveness. In my defenselessness, my safety lies, but it, my defensiveness is the control, the blocks that I am putting up because the idea of learning who I really am can still be frightening. It's a total shift it's a new thought system. It's uncomfortable for many to have this kind of change. And, but when I realize how much I truly want to go past all of my defensiveness because I really do want to achieve this because I have been denying who I am and it's time. It's time for that to end. And then it says, uh, so now we attempt to go past all our defenses for a little while each day. A little while each day. Again, we're still not being um, instructed that we have to do this, you know, 24-7. It's just a little while. But those, those little bits, those little bits, we'll call them a holy instant. Those little instances, those holy instances, as we string them together like a beautiful necklace of pearls, beautiful white pearls, they will become more and more important to us and we will see the value in them and see that the what we have valued in the past is no longer of worth to us. And it will this will be enough to guarantee the rest, those few little moments. So the actual lesson for today is I trust my brothers who are one with me. Trust is the main characteristic of the teachers of God. This is what we have. This is what we need more than anything else. It is the foundation for everything else that comes after it. Trusting your brothers is essential to establishing and holding up your faith in your ability to transcend doubt and lack of sure conviction in yourself. 
When you attack a brother, you proclaim that he is limited by what you have perceived in him. Remember, our perceptions come mostly from our ego. We can have true perception. We can, but that is not generally how we have been experiencing our brothers or this world. We have perceptions, and we do not look beyond the errors that we see in those perceptions. Instead, we magnify them. They become so big that they are becoming blocks to the awareness of love's presence in our brothers and in everything else around us. The blocks of your awareness of the self that lies beyond your own mistakes and past his, your brother's, seeming sins as well as yours. So not only am I blocking what my brother truly is, but I am blocking myself as well, because again, we are one. And then the lesson has that, you know, change but your focus. We've heard change your, change your thoughts, change your life, change your focus. And as we change our focus, what we behold will change accordingly. Um, the, this faith, having faith in what we are perceiving now, remove your focus of your brother's sins and you experience the peace that comes from faith in sinlessness. Let me behold the sinlessness in my brother and in myself. And this faith receives it, it, its only sure support for from what you see in others past their sins. Because remember, if I'm seeing my brother's sins, his atrocities even, I'm seeing not just mistakes because they have a, in my mind, my perception, they have a much greater and more dire and lethal focus. If I'm sharing that, even within my own mind, I am strengthening that, and it's going to make me harder to transcend that, to come into the light and to see the sinlessness that really is beyond all that I believe I am seeing. Uh, the lesson continues. We instruct our minds that this is, it is this we seek and only this for just a little while, only now. And then it says a major hazard to success has been our involvement with the past and the future goals. We have spent very little time in now. And yet we know that now is the only time. And we've been quite preoccupied how extremely these different goals this course is advocating are from those we held before. It's a new thought system. It is completely different. Um, and you have also been dismayed by the depressing and restricting thought that even if you should succeed, you will inevitably lose your way again. But that is not necessarily true. We might, we might lose our way. We have wandered off. But every time we wander off, our elder brother, Holy Spirit, calls us back because we truly want to go back. And how could this matter? For the past is gone, the future but imagined. These concerns are but defenses against the present change of focus in perception. So let me perceive only now. And then in paragraph seven, lately, you know, we have buzzwords that come around and one of the buzzwords has been intention. And the uh, paragraph seven addresses that. It says, we enter in the time of practicing with one intent, one intention, to look upon the sinlessness within. So this is our intention. And if, if I see anything that is other than that, then I have instructions to give my mind and I simply say, it is not this that I would look upon. I trust my brothers who are one with me. And this is our mantra for this lesson that we can go to every time. It does not say, the, the practicing is not laid out um, like it has been in, in other lessons. But I'm going to say we practice in the morning and we practice it at night, just as we have been doing. And hourly, and hourly, if we can simply re remember to say that it is not this that I would look upon, I trust my brothers who are one with me. This is where we are building those little pathways within our mind to change our thinking. So it says, we do not seek for long range goals. We want to come and do this only in the now, to be here now. And as each obstruction seems to block the vision of our sinlessness, we seek but for uh, that to stop for just an instant, it says surcease. 
the misery that focused upon sin will bring and uncorrected will remain. We don't want that misery. We want to rise above it. We want to see the beautiful sinlessness in both our brother and in ourself. It says, and as our focus goes beyond mistakes, we will behold a holy, sinless world. When seeing this is all we want to see, when this is all we seek for in the name of true perception, are the eyes of Christ inevitably yours, and the eyes of Christ only see the light and the sinlessness that is within everyone, and we will see a light around the edges of our brothers. We will see that the truth of who we are and who our brother is, is one. We are one with them, and I trust my brothers who are one with me and I will see only that. And we give our trust to the experience we ask for now. Our sinlessness is but the will of God. This instant is our willing one, our willing one with his. Oh, any one with his. God's will is all there is. There is no will but God's. And we share in that as we trust our brothers who are one with us. That's it for today. Uh, I hope this helped. Please like, please share, please subscribe, please pray. Please try to have at least one instant today, just an instant, one little speck of time where this feels as it is the perfect guidance that you need in that moment and see the blocks that will start to fade away from your awareness of the truth of who you are and who your brother is. Namaste.